Merry Christmas, golf friends, and welcome to our webinar series, Tuesday Traces. Tonight's gonna to be really exciting because instead of just hearing about the V1 pressure mat technology, we're gonna hear about the entire suite of V1 sports products, their evolution, and how one of our most special partners has been using these tools since the mid 1990s. And of course, we're gonna have a little fun. So what were you doing in 1995? I was graduating from Wando High School. Please don't do that to me, okay? <laughs> That's what I was doing. Welcome to all the folks that have registered and have joined us via the Zoom webinar, and welcome to all the folks tuning in to our V1 Sports Facebook Live channel. The recording of tonight's webinar, after Anna edits out all of our cuss words and our misbehaving, will be available on the V1 Sports YouTube channel in a few days. If you're registered, you'll automatically receive the recording via email. Uh, I've already received some questions for TP. If you have more, please throw them in the chat window on Facebook or Zoom. We'll get to them. Um, if you don't already know, and I have a new, a lot of new faces tuning in, a ton of people tuning in, so I just want to do a little bit about V1 Sports. We are a 25-year-old company and the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. Like tonight, one of our best is tuning in with us. Our development team is leading the industry with software integrations, including Body Track Foresight and others on the way. Uh, please reach out to sales of E1 Sports to hear about all of our products, and we're happy to talk you through what works for you and your golf business. I am Mandy Von C, Regional Sales Manager for V1 Sports based in Charleston, South Carolina. I get to take care of Tom Patry. After awesome. doing three months of Tuesday Traces awesome. webinars, I'm really excited to come full circle with V1 Sports and present some different ideas, and I hope that you'll consider adding this technology so that we can keep growing the game of golf. One more really exciting thing before we hear from Mr. Patry. Uh, before we get too far, we're going to do a really cool giveaway. Uh, we do giveaways randomly. Tonight is so special because it's Christmas. Um, I have one of my most favorite partners with us. And I wear my special Christmas shirt. So we're going to give wow. away a wow. uh, cool package that is, wow. y'all, this is so cool, right? Tom, I can't believe this is like the most generous thing no, no. ever. I want to win this. We're, we're not allowed to win it, but you're going to get six months of remote lessons with Tom Patry. That's a $400 value. Uh, V1 Golf Plus, which is the app that you'll use to send your swings to Tom Patry. V1 Game Eagle, which is the shot tracking app that we use on the course. A V1 phone holder and the V1 Home Studio. That software is worth almost $600. This is a $1,200 value. I'm super excited. I can't believe the bosses are letting us do it. Uh, so I mentioned we're a 25-year-old company. Back in 1995, Gary Palace, who is still with us, we're just getting started, and they signed up a young Tom Patry. Very young. Sports software. Um, Tom, welcome to Tuesday Traces. Thanks, man. You're nice to be here with you. Um, you know, I've seen you do a lot of Instagram Lives. You're kind of nailing Instagram Live like I feel we're nailing this webinar thing. How many have you done? You've been doing them for... This is, uh, we just did show number 33 this past week. Um, and we've had some, you know, some really great people on. We had uh, Cooper Manning a couple weeks ago. We've, we've had a number of golf instructors. We had uh, Dave Moore, the president of Titleist. We had a guy named Brian Finnerty. You might know who he is. Yeah. He, yep. he was on one week. Um, we don't have to tout him too much. He's probably watching. So if he is, you know, it was, it was one of my worst shows, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. no, we've had some great guests. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of great people coming to rock Media's coming on next month. Oh, that's cool. We've had some tour players. We've had a couple of masters champions. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And so when you, you started doing that during COVID, was that just to connect like I'm doing? To that was, platform that, to was connect with the community? that was strictly out of desperation. Cause I was so bored out of my mind. Uh, sitting at home during COVID, I wanted something to do. And I saw some other people doing it. And I said, you know, as stupid as I am, I can't be that hard. I can probably pull this thing off. So I just really went into my database and uh, yeah, asked it's been fun. Asked people on and, and, and all of a sudden, bang, it was going. It became a Thursday night thing. It's every Thursday night at eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, I watch, I've watched multiple, you've, you've seen me buzz in, but it's funny. We've, uh, we've screwed a few of these up. We're getting pretty good at them, right? Good. Good. Um, okay, so now I know for a fact that you have two loves. I don't know if everybody knows this, but golf and fishing. I know you're pretty good at both. Would you say that? Pretty good at both? No, I, I would say I, I was at one time reasonably good at golf, and I am, uh, I am a very mediocre fisherman. My wife is a uh, borderline tour player fisherman, uh, so it's embarrassing because <laughs> yeah. 
I, I have a 14 year old that is a master I, fisherman. For I, get sure. fish I get my butt handed to me on a regular. I get my butt handed to me on a regular basis by her. So it's I'm trying my best, but I'm way right. behind. Way okay, behind. so how, what what got you in golf years ago? What what, what how old actually, were you? Actually, Mandy, totally by accident. At 11 years old, my dad took over a, a public golf course operation in the sales and catering and, and food and beverage side, and moved us onto the property of a public golf course on the east end of Long Island in New York. And I woke up one morning as a fifth grader and looked out and there were men in very funny looking pants and bright colored shirts hitting a white ball around. I had no idea what they were doing. I had never even heard of golf and being plopped onto this property as an 11 year old, there was nothing else to do. There were no kids around. There was no, no it, was, it wasn't in the neighborhood. Um, so really it was really an accident and, uh, and fell in love with it. Yeah. And did you, you didn't, did you go to school? Did you play golf at? Southern, Florida Southern? Excuse me? Did you play golf in college? Um, yeah, I, I, I won a thing called the NCAA, Mandy, in college. Ah. So yeah, I played a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah just, you think? A, 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 a little bit. I'm little sorry. Bit. I'm a little distracted. We're seeing comments that you're sideways. So I'm sorry. You guys, that is probably a setting on your phone if you're tuned in with a mobile device. Tom is straight up and down for me. So maybe just and I, check and I, and your been, setting. There, there, there have been evenings where I've been sideways, but this is <laughs> Not yet, right? We haven't I mean, gotten to that part yet, right? We haven't gotten to that part, right, exactly. Yeah, so sorry for the guys. Maybe just check your settings. Sorry, I was a little distracted by those comments. Yeah, he's right side up. We're seeing that you're right side up. Okay, so as you're saying, of course, um, your list of accomplishments is a mile long. We could spend the rest of the webinar. Let's, let, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Listing not them. Do that. There are a couple worth mentioning. The 1981 NCAA Tournament Two National Championship, of course. The 1999 eight met New York PGA teacher of the year. That's a huge deal. Um, between 20 and 2013 golf magazine, top teacher, top 100 teacher in America, golf digest, best teacher in state forever. Um, you're a published author. Your students have won everything. Um, you're pretty accomplished with your awards there, Tom. Yeah. As, as, as my wife would say, you know, if, if it comes down to golf, please listen to me. Anything else, please don't pay any attention to me at all. <laughs> so golf, golf? Golf's, about, golf's about all I know. Yeah, that's about it. I'm pretty one dimensional. No, that's not true. That's not true. Um, so we've had, a, I reached out to a lot of people about uh -oh. what to talk to you about tonight. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And most of them said, you have to ask him about his best Freddy couple stories. Can you tell us your best Fred couple story? Oh, that's a hard, there's, there's, there's quite a few of those. Um, I know there's a lot of them. What's your best one? Well, I, I guess, I guess the way we met was pretty, was pretty fun. We, we met at the, uh, in my, my junior year in college at the uh, Ohio State Fall Classic at uh, Scarlet Course in Ohio, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. And, um, and then later on that year, um, I played in the uh, NCAA Division I National Championship because I had finished second in Division II. And we, had, we kind of rekindled the friendship there. We'd only met a couple of times. Um, and, and in typical Fred fashion, um, I missed the 54 hole cut there and was on a pay phone now that, that tells how old I am. I was on a pay phone trying to make a phone call to get a plane flight out of Columbus. And he kind of walked over, picked up the receiver out of my hand and clicked it down. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to get out of here. I missed the cut. He goes, well, listen, we're going to go out and play Muirfield this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Nicholas invited us out. Why don't you come with us and play with us? Seriously? Uh, and, that, and that's, that's Fred. That's, that's how, you know, Fred saw somebody who was kind of down on the dumps because he had missed a cut and, and said, you hang up the phone. And, and we're, I said, well, I got to play. I got to need someplace to stay tonight because you can stay in our room on the floor come play golf and off he went. And, uh, that's, that's Freddie. Freddie has not changed at all in all these years. He, he, uh, he's done a bunch of things for me in my career very quietly. Um, he, he's, he's probably the most unchanged successful athlete I've met in my career. Um, and what was that a, round like? Well, it's funny. Cause I, I, you know, since then I've, I've probably played with Fred, you know, I don't know, 20 times or 25 times over the years, you know, we can get together whenever we're on opposite coasts, obviously, but, uh, you know, he, to me, Mandy, he's, he's just Fred, my friend from college, you know, he's not, he's not Fred Couples, the Masters champion, Fred Couples, TPC, or Fred Couples, you know, whatever, he, he's just Fred, you know, so it's, it's, it's like playing with a friend, you know, it's just like playing, let's go play with Fred. Um, another great one, though, was the year he won, the first year he won TPC, 1984, I was staying with him, and uh, for people who are too young to remember this, in, in the last round, 
He had only won one tournament in his life up until then. In the last round, he was paired with a guy named Watson and Ballesteros. And in front of him was a guy named Trevino and Stadler. And long story short, he winds up winning the golf tournament, which was far and away the biggest thing he'd ever won in his life at that point. And when we got done, you know, we went, you know, went various television interviews and media and, and volunteers parties and thank this person and thank that person. So we didn't get off the grounds at TPC Sawgrass till about 10 o'clock at night. And we hadn't eaten yet and we were starving. And, you know, everybody's gone and we get in the rental car and we're driving through what is now is now Ponte Vedra, which was was nothing out there then. Right. And we're looking for someplace, just someplace open. And we pulled into a place. I'll never forget this as long as I live named Hans Bistro. It was a German restaurant. That was the only place we could find open. And we got the TPC trophy and we go up one side and we sit it down on the desk on, on the in table. In the restaurant? In the restaurant on the table. <laughs> And Hans, I guess the guy, I guess it was Hans who owned the place, was the only place in there. Comes over to take our order, has no clue about golf, doesn't understand what who we are or anything. Thank God. And uh, I looked at him. I said, "You just beat, you just beat Watson and Ballesteros coming down the stretch of TPC." And he said to me, just in typical Fred again, he said, "Yeah, yeah, but they're good." I said, "You just beat them." He said, "Yeah, and yeah." We're hanging out good. in a in a German yeah, restaurant. German restaurant. Yeah, but they're but they're good. And that, that's Fred. You know, they, but they're good. You know, you just. He's so unaffected. He's so uh, he's so regular, um, and he re and he remains that way. He's still that yeah. way today. I wish I could stay like that on the golf course. Well, how about um, life? Okay, back in 1995, what you started teaching golf? Why no, did you? I, I, no, I started teaching golf in 1984, 83, off and on, okay. uh, but. In 1995, what you're referring to is that's when V1 came into my life. So I, I'm a dinosaur, as we all know, you know, uh, and, and in 1993, 94, 95, we were just basically touching on this thing called video instruction. And, um, and I was a little intrigued by it. I thought it was interesting, you know, let's get, let's get somebody on video and do some analysis. And I started hunting around for resources and there weren't very many back then at all, to say the least, you know, none are any good anyway. And I came across this thing called V1. And, and I, I'm going to ask, uh, I hope Brian's watching, I'm going to ask for a refund because I, I purchased my first V1 system back then, which if anybody, if anybody can, is anybody old enough out there to remember this? There were these two giant. We have giant, a picture. We're going to show a picture. Giant white boxes. And there were, there were cords and there were cables and cameras everywhere. And it would take about, if you were really good at it, you could get the whole thing set up maybe in under an hour. <laughs> um, before you're even ready to shoot one piece of film and it was on a v you recorded onto a vhs tape and it was a wireless mic and it, it was wait it was, vhs you said vhs tapes you heard me everyone that's watching all these hundreds of people they were you had to look at your videos on vhs tapes when we started i love it i love and it, was, it. it there was a screen in one of the boxes you could kind of look at things on and you had to get the you had to get the box opened up a certain way so the sun didn't you know impart the screen and it was, it was, it was not user-friendly and I paid a whopping $27,000 for that system. $27,000? Yeah, so, so if Brian, if you're watching, if you can just send me a check back for 27 grand, I'd, we can call it even. I'd be very Yeah, grateful. right? So all you guys that are watching and you got my quotes recently, you should be thanking me because I gave you yeah. a huge deal. Yeah, 27 grand and I oh, paid it off. I paid, I paid it off over, I think three and a half or four years. Um, it was like a second mortgage back then. And I thought I was so cool because I had these boxes I would load in the back of my, my, my SUV and drive to another location to do a school or something. It was a major part of me pain in the ass. All right, so um, we got to see that. Anna, can you show us some of these pictures? Anna's going to do a screen share. We have to see it. I just want everyone to see how full circle we've come. And I'll tell you where some of these <laughs> pictures are. If you guys can hear me. So the okay. picture, can you see that? So the picture on the left is the back of the range at... Um, Innisbrook in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where I did some schools. The picture on the right is at Orange County National in Orlando. So if you can picture these two boxes, there, there's two <laughs> boxes stacked on top of each other and there's cords and connectors that went from one box to the other. And then they went out to a down the line camera and a face on camera and a tripod. Um, and then the top box you can see opens up and there's a screen inside there. You can look at the video on screen and a slot, to put the VHS tape in there to record. And sometimes it worked and, and sometimes it didn't work so hot. Um, <laughs> and sometimes the cables were kind of, would come loose or the, you know, the camera would disconnect or, 
or and then here's the other thing you needed a power source so if you're at the back of a range you need also need a power source to plug into um and sometimes you had to run an extension cord 200 yards to find a power oh source. oh my god yeah, so, it was, so it was, Tom, did you give the VHS tape to a student to watch or did you, you know, mail so them? You, you finish the VHS tape and they'd either take it home from the school with them or you would send it to them later on in the snail mail. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it was a, it was a, actually on, on the screen on the right, I figured out a way to hook up a uh, alternate power source into a golf cart. So I'd run it I'd run it off the golf cart batteries on the screen on the right. I figured out how to do that. Um, <laughs> but, but actually, before the folks at V1 figured it out, I figured it out. Someone um, says, looks like how the NFL does replay analysis in New York. <laughs> yeah, no, not, not, not quite. Not quite. I think they're a little bit far, <laughs> further ahead. And then on, on the screen on the left, I ran a power source back to that building behind me at the back of the range in Innisbrook. Um, they let me plug in there. Um, so that was, uh, these are old pictures. I mean, I, I have a lot of hair in those pictures and I'm about 30 pounds lighter and I could hit it about 30 yards further back then. I so like it. Was, that's a long time ago. That's I like it. Ago. There's a couple other pictures we have. Let's see. Oh Bob, boy. What you got? Oh boy. All right, so here's, um, here's a couple other. Can you talk to these? Yeah, so that's that's also Innisbrook. We used it on the putting green. Also did some putting analysis on the right-hand screen. Um, and then the left-hand screen, it's one of my assistants working with a student. Um, on the left-hand screen. That's also, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mandy, both these are at Innisbrook also um, that same winter. Um, and as you see, I'm, I'm working with the guy on, the, on, on his putting stroke on the right, and then the uh, assistant is running the, uh, the recording of the tape uh, back there in the, in the uh, background on the right-hand side. Um, hey, Tom, I have a question. It's, um, it's, it's about how to um use the v1 it's from someone that asked at the very beginning of our show sure. it's relevant then and now the question is how do you communicate by the v1 system for a person to practically understand what to do you can mentally and visually see what to do but to implement into feeling and action that's a great question because you know I, I don't think as good as v1 is and it's the best on the market by far not even a close second out there um you know you can't really communicate feel through a visual medium you have to you have to be able to put your hands on somebody or make them do things if um i wish i had sent you a screenshot of my uh of my lesson t set up during the day because on the lesson t there's probably if i'm guessing somewhere in excess of about 120 toys on the lesson t i set up every day that i can i can grab you know in an arm's length and put it in somebody's hands toys do you mean uh drill things tennis balls teaching aids of any Six, kind, teaching, you know, yeah, yeah. and what I'll do with those teaching aids live is I'll, I'll take a V1 uh, video on, on, on the screen, on, on the lesson T using an iPad uh, outdoors while they're doing a drill with a toy and they'll be able to see what the action looks like while they're feeling it. And that's the one thing when we commun communicate remotely, we can't do. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, that, that is a little bit of a handicap when you do remote video. But I've also, maybe what, I, what I've also done through the years is I have filmed somewhere in excess 450 drills, uh, either in a TV studio, I, which I spent a lot of money on at one time, or uh, remotely myself and logged them on to my, into my V1 library. So, and, I, and I, they're pretty descriptive, they're pretty detailed. So when I uh, do a remote video, I can drop in drills um, that people can do and also suggest uh, teaching aids that they can use while they're doing the drills that will get them closer to the quote unquote feel situation. Sure, sure. So um, yeah, I love the voiceover. You know, we extended that to 10 minutes during COVID because so many people were doing voiceovers. So in addition to, I think your instructor working with you remotely, telling you, using aids, seeing it, you know, that voiceover seems to be um, pretty sticky and powerful. And that brings us to, you know, can you talk to a little bit about the evolution of V1 from 1995 until today? Yeah. I mean, the yes. lesson T from what we just saw in pictures to what you're just talking about. So, you know, it's like, I, I, I laugh uh, when, I, when I speak to young teachers today and they quasi complain about, you know, an iPhone or an iPad or, you know, um, film speed not being fast enough or clarity. And I said, dude, let me tell you something. Let me take you back about 25 years ago. <laughs> and, let, and let me show you what we were dealing with. You guys have got it made. I mean, to take a V1 app and load it onto an iPad 
uh, or an iPhone or any kind of smartphone or smart device or droid, with the ease that we do today, with the clarity, with the speed, uh, with the ability to do, you know, overlays, side by side comparisons, you know, drop in a tour swing, dro drop in a swing tip or drill that you've recorded. Um, th this, this thing has come so far in relatively speaking, a short period of time and, and no telling where we're going. And now with the, with the, you know, with body track and, and, you know, to do, you know, th those kind of, those kind of analysis too, and hook it into V1, um, you know, it's, I, I, during COVID last year, I, I gutted my garage and built an indoor studio and have body track in there, have V1 in there and have Trackman in there all integrated into a, into a, a flat screen. Um, and, to, to have that technology at your fingertips and have the ease of use of V1 is an absolute joke. If, if, you, if you can't give a good lesson with that technology, then, then you need to do something else. Maybe drive a, cab, <laughs> you know, drive a cab or work on a garbage truck or do something different because it's, if you can't get your point across and make the student understand uh, with, with those things at your fingertips and disposal, then, then you have a communication issue. You might've gone to Clemson. It could be, it could be a- ACC. Oh, here we go. Here we could go. Be an ACC thing. You know, it could be just an, it could be anything. <laughs> um, you know, for a company to have been around for 25 years and still growing like we are and still serving this many golf instructors, I, first of all, I think it's really cool that we can say that. And we have the largest tour model database. And as you're using it, like you said, your drill library grows and grows and grows. And so you can attach those drills on right. the end of a lesson. Right. Um, can you just talk to a little bit? I'm hope I my, I didn't tell you about this question. I'm I hope you don't say anything bad. Can you talk to a little bit the support of our team over the 25 years? And it's I say that because my I I am here because of these people for sure. I totally love my job because of the people I get to work with. You know, uh, but I think it's really important when you talk about technology and the fact that we support it well. It's pretty easy to speak to that, Mandy, because quite frankly, when I when I first became a V1 user 25 years ago, you know, Chris Hart was still involved and his team and then the transition and, and migration now to Brian's team. Um, there's never been, there's never been a downtime where I feel like I couldn't call V1, call Mandy, call Brian, back then call Chris and, and, and get a personal response as quickly as I possibly could. One of the things I did when I did my due diligence early on in the mid nineties with V1 was there were one or two other players in that market, and I'm not going to name them because it's not worth naming them because they're not worth a crap, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, and, and one of the things I did was call their support teams and speak to them. And that was one of the things that made me make my decision to go with V1 back then, as it would if I was making that same choice today. The response time, um, the care and concern, both then and now, um, and, and, and the ability to educate is not even close between V1 and the second competitor. And listen, I'm doing a webinar because you asked me to come on. I, I'm not an employee of V1, V1 does not pay me. I don't have any skin in the game. There is nobody close in the marketplace to V1 on the video technology side and now with the addition of body track that can compete with V1. So if you're using something else, you're, you're, you're playing for the second team. You know, it's like, are you playing for Alabama or are you playing for Clemson? Who are you playing for? You know, what's, yeah, Haley is going to love that. Haley is right. helping us manage this. And her <laughs> boyfriend or husband is, he is a player at Alabama. Haley, roll tide, baby. Roll yeah. tide. Oh, yeah. She's going to love it. I'm going to leave her muted because I can't have the two of you peering on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why? So um, just business, you know, we're always, I, I, I talk about our support team, but I also talk about our mission to support, to support your golf business. I tell people all the time. You should not be spending too much time with my support team. You should be teaching, not talking to us. Why did you decide to create a V1 Sports Online Academy? That is has grown your business tremendously. That's, that's a great question. Originally, originally, and it's changed. Originally, I did it because I taught in a northern location and a southern location, which I still do. Um, and I wanted the ability, when I went south, for my northern people to stay connected to me if they were hitting balls in an indoor range or... Had a, had, a, had a studio in their home or could get out when the weather was halfway decent. And then when I, was in the, when I left the South to go North, I wanted my Southern students the same way to be able to stay connected to me. So originally it was about staying connected to the people I cared about. Right. It, it's changed now because the model has changed. My, at least my model has changed in that I 
right now, I think at last count, I'm teaching about 150 people that I'll never meet, never have met, um, don't plan on meeting, probably geographically can't meet, that, that check in from time to time, either on a package with me or on an individual basis and ask for help. Um, and again, if you told me 25 years ago that somebody would send video through this box we call an iPad and we'd have, you know, voice over capability, graphics, side-by-side -side comparisons, overlays, you know, drills we could add in seamlessly and, and communicate and send something in 90 seconds back to them. Um, I would have told you you were crazy. So it, the model has now, is, there's, there's a couple of prongs in my model now. There's North South model. Uh, there's a Midwest model. There's an overseas model. And there's just a random model where people check in because they find it either on social media or through some other medium and connect. Um, so how powerful is that? I mean, I've, I've had, I've done video lessons with people in Australia, in Hong Kong, uh, in different parts of Europe. Uh, in the Caribbean, in South America, in Mexico, and in Canada, um, using a V1. Um, you and so I have worked together on multiple home studios of your we students. Have, we have, we have, we have. Which is and, super and, cool. I mean, yeah, I, it, it, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's how powerful is that when somebody can say, you know, I need some help now. I'm going to send Tom or whatever whoever else uses V1 a piece of film, and I'm going to get an answer back like that. I mean, that that's unbelievable. That's incredible. It's incredible. Right. And, you know, we're really proud of the environment and the fact that we have V1 Golf for the student to use to take their video. Um, I got a question from Mark Johnston. He emailed it to me earlier, and it's about the golf swing. And I wanted to ask, ask this question to you. He asked, please go over turning versus sliding from the caddy view and how to practice the correct movements. It's a great question. So I actually, it's funny. I, I sent you, I, I don't know if you got this minute. I got a, I sent you a picture of a lesson today. Did you get it from me? Just uh, now today? Yeah. Later, maybe even early this evening. Today I, in one I, hour. Yep. I've got it. I'm going to send way, it. Is there any way you can get that up? Yep. Hang on. Because if we can get that up, that's a perfect example of what, what somebody went through just today. A uh, female student of mine at Crown Colony, one of my members came to me with that exact issue. And because of the visual medium that she didn't realize what she was doing, we used V1 to show her the difference between turning and sliding in her backswing motion. And I have a before and an after I sent you. Um, and if you can pull that up. Is that it? There, there, yeah, there it is. So there's Christine right there. So on the bottom, we drew a, we drew a line graphically, vertically up the right side of her body. And that was the, the blow picture was the before where she was kind of sliding her hips to the right which caused a little reverse pivot and inversion. She didn't get behind the ball very well. And through a series of drills we did for about, you know, about 15 minutes, the top picture is an after picture of a motion she made in her backswing. Um, looks radically different, obviously. And uh, the, the uh, byproduct uh, was, the, diff the difference in the byproduct was in the bottom screen, she hit a kind of a low screamer that went about 30 yards right of the target line. It didn't have very much compression. And the top picture, after we hit a few shots, turned into a, this woman's pretty strong actually, turned into about a 215 yard high draw. So she was a little bit happier with the high draw than the low screamer to the right. Um, and there's a perfect example, Mark, of a, of a turning motion uh, of the lower body um, versus a sliding motion of the lower body. Um, and we basically did that through visual medium. I, I kind of put my hands on her, moved her around a little bit, made her feel something that was rotational versus lateral. Uh, she picked up on the field pretty quickly. We did a couple of pictures in between. It didn't look as good. But by the third or the fourth picture, which is this one right here, this is what we produced. So there's an example of the visual medium changing the image in the brain, leading to uh, something that is uh, physically different in the motion in a very short period of time. Cool. Nice. That's awesome. I love a picture's worth a thousand words. Rob Boyle Mark, just said Mark, that. Mark, listen, Mark, listen, happy to answer the question. Hope that helped you, pal. Thank you. Um, I have a quote for you. Someone is on our chat window. He just joined late. He's a buddy of yours. Can you guess who said it? I'm standing too late to it after I hit it. Help. I'm standing too close to it after I hit it. Help. That could be any number of people. So no, I don't know who that is. You don't know who that is? That's Bob no. Grissett. <laughs> Well, Bob, Bob let, me, let, let me tell you a little story about Bob Grissett. To those people out there who don't know anything about Bob. Well, Bob Grissett is one of our, another huge partner of V1. We love Bob, Bob Grissett. 
Bob Grissett is based on the uh, east coast of Florida. And if you can bring me back onto the screen, Mandy, I want to show you something. Okay. Can you, can you give me one second here. Just give me one second. This is a this is a book that if everybody can see that. that yep, Bob 10 Lessons wrote, of the True Fundamentals Bob, of the Golf Bob, Bob Grissett wrote. It must have done this overnight because there's not really very many pages in the wall. <laughs> I don't know. This thing, I'm telling you right now, this thing weighs about five pounds. Uh, Bob sent me this as a gift about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and I've gone through it tooth and nail. This is a second more condensed version of it. And of those of you who don't have this book and you're a golf junkie, uh, 10 Keys, The Basic Elements of a Golf Swing and 10 Lessons, The True Fundamentals of the Golf Swing, and, you're, and you really consider yourself a learner, you need to have a copy of Grissett's book. Grissett is a good friend of mine, as he is a good friend of Mandy's. Bob and I spend some time together. He is kind of my, one of my real go-to people. I have a lot of respect for him. Um, he teaches on the East Coast. I hope he stays over there because he comes over to the West Coast. He's going to take a lot of my business away from me because he's so talented. Um, I love the guy. He is a video junkie. He is the king of video. Um, I lean on him for a lot of information. He is an avid V1 user and a big believer. And the fact that he's tuning in to listen to me banter is, is a real compliment. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Tom. Um, okay, so can you, the book title, they want the book title again. And by the way, Bob says it's eight pounds, not five. That's, that's it. He's talking about his waistline, not the book. <laughs> the name of the book is 10 Lessons, The True Fundamentals of the Golf Swing. If you don't, if you want a copy of it, the best way to get a copy is to follow Bob on Instagram and message him and he will get a copy to you because he is a money hungry SOB and he will make sure he gets one out to you. <laughs> I will edit that part out. Bob, don't worry. We'll edit that out. All right. No, no, that's, that's factual. Leave that in. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, I, a lot, a lot of your students, you have so many students don't use the pressure mat, but just even if they don't have the pressure mat, can you talk about the basic process for teaching sure. a student remotely? H how do sure. you go about that? If I win the package tonight, how do I, how do I do this? How do I get a lesson? Well, the, you know, the, the, the package you're going to win tonight is a remote package. So all you have to do is load the V1 app onto your smartphone, take, take a picture of your wonderful golf swing and send it over to me by choosing me as an instructor when you, when you get to the send portion of the uh, of the app that sounds um, so easy what you just said it well it is it is that easy why, why would it listen here's the bottom line if i can use v1 anybody <laughs> can because i am a blithering technical idiot okay so if i can use v1 anybody in the world can use it my dog can get on v1 and do a pretty good job with it now my dog's pretty smart but i mean he can use it the pressure mat is a whole different animal so my pressure mat experience began with a guy named Terry Hashimoto. Uh, do, you know who, do you know Terry, Mandy? Do I know Terry? Are you kidding me? I, no. Yes, I know Terry very so well. Terry I'll Hashimoto call him. turned me on to body track a long time ago, convinced me I had to have a, a mat. Uh, I use it in my home studio here. I, I leave it here in my home studio. I use it when I, uh, when I work indoors here. Um, it, it's a no-brainer. I mean, uh, anybody is thinking about building a home studio themselves for their own, for their own use and and Mandy does a sales pitch. If she doesn't include the pressure mat, she's not doing her job. You have to have that in your home. It's yeah. a must. It's it's a no brainer. It's just a, an. I laugh, Tom. You, I won't say I won't say who out loud who we're talking about. But David you Decker. have a student. Dave, Dave, David no, Decker. you can't say that. David, De David Decker, you're 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 a moron. Get the pressure mat, David. If you're tuned in tonight, David. I know. I'm like, way, oh God, is he watching? Way. Here's why you don't have to edit, edit this out because he's coming to see me next month for two days of instruction. And when he gets here in two, in, in next month to take the instruction, and if he doesn't have the pressure map by that time, I'm going to beat him over the head with oh, one. Oh God. It's really bad when your golf instructor says you need to buy a pressure mat. Your golf game needs the pressure mat. It's, anyway. it's, 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 it's an incredible feedback resource. Why, why go through the pains of building a home studio and spending that kind of money and not include the pressure mat. Why would you leave? That's like leaving out the steering wheel of a car. That's like buying a car without a steering wheel. Why would you do that? <laughs> and it's so easy, right? The you, know what, you, know what, so... you know You know You know why you do that, David? Because you're an idiot. That's why. <laughs> Buy the pressure mat. He actually, he actually just texted me. So that's pretty funny. Hopefully he's not watching right now. <laughs> Becker, oh tune in. Tune in. Jeez, that's so funny. Maybe we manifested that. So when you do a lesson, though, um, what 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 feedback are you using on the body track? The pressure graphs mostly. 
you know, it depends on it depends on the sophistication of the student, and I'm not I'm not trying to dumb it down, but you know, when when you start throwing things at people, and you have a track man running, you have video running, and you have a pressure mat running, if you're I think if you're a good instructor, you have to be careful with how much you throw at somebody. Um, you know, if if it's if, if I'm using the pressure mat with the average recreational player, we're talking about where we are in space and time and weight distribution and creating force. Uh, we're not going to get more sophisticated than that. Now, if you have a tour player, a different deal. You might go to a lot of different areas of the mat to get more and more detailed. So I think it all depends on who you have with you, Mandy, and what you're doing. I won't really run more than one technology at a time at somebody. In other words, if I'm using V1, I'm using V1. If I'm using the pressure mat, I'm using the pressure mat. And if I'm using track man, I'm turning the other guys off and using track man. So right. I, think, I think the art of teaching... Um, has to do with the art of communication and the art of communication has to do with simplicity and getting the point across and developing a better result, uh, the simplest way possible. I think, I think today because of technology, uh, technology is both our saving grace and our, it's our worst evil at the same time. I think using sophisticated, using sophisticated technology in a proper sequence as simply as possible to convey a point and get the hell out of the way is a really, yeah. is, is an art form. I, I'm sure. a beginner golfer and I can't handle too much or I get, I just. No, uh, I mean, I think, I think, you know, for example, that picture, that picture we just had a, up a little while ago of the lady I taught today. Uh, she's a really good athlete, a really good athlete. And she hits it a long way. She creates a lot of speed, but we took one or two pictures. We showed her the differences. Boom. She got it. Nice. Now if we, had, if we had had two or three, two or three technologies running at the same time. She might've had blood running out of her ears, you know, so we got to be careful with that. Right. So Lisa asked a good question and I was going to ask the same question because you know it's my area where I need to work. Um, putting. Do you ever use the mat for putting? No, not too much. I don't use the mat much for putting, truthfully. I use V1 quite a bit for putting. Uh, I, I, you know, I use face on and down the line. I use ground level views of both the caddy view and, and, and the uh, down the line view for putting. Um, I like using the V1 a lot for putting. Um, but not, I don't use the pressure mat much for putting, no. Hmm. Okay. What's, uh, what, can you give me a tip for putting that I can work on over Christmas? So putting, there's two things I see more than anything else with a recreational player putting. I see head movement, you know, from side to side, coming out of their posture, moving laterally. And I see left wrist breakdown. So I call keeping the head still, not down, still keeping the coconut quiet. So that will, you'll never forget that, will you, Mandy? You never forget keep. The I coconut. will never forget it. Keep the coconut so, quiet. So if if people could if people could do if I could give everybody one thing for their putting stroke for Christmas, I'd ask them to keep the coconut quiet. If you can keep the coconut quiet longer in your three stroke, you're gonna hit more solid, more online putts. Okay. All right. That's what I'll work on. I love it. Um, I'd like to take a moment before we um, do our giveaway, and I want to show everyone one of your voiceovers. Um, so this is a uh -oh. voiceover lesson. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Do you recognize this? That is the infamous Don Lindsayman. This gentleman, just let me set this up. This gentleman is six foot eight. Okay. He is, Mandy, I'm going to hurt you. He's a, he's a Duke graduate. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so that, I understand. I, I, I'm with you on this one. But, uh, by the way, this is one of the few times I'm going to side with you with Clemson. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Uh, and, when he, and when he originally came to me, he was probably, and I'm not exaggerating, 10 to 15 degrees over the top in his downswing. Really? So what I've, done, what I've done here is I've drawn an address shaft plane line, very simply. And this is about, uh, this is about a year into our work together, if not a little bit more. But go ahead and play this, if you will. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he takes the club back and keeps the club pretty nicely in front of him uh, as he takes the club away. If I remember this piece of film, I think I do. I only have about 3,000. Stop right there. So at this point, when we first got, now let's go back down to waist high, if you don't mind. Right? Well, there we go. When we originally started, that, that club head would have been back by his, back of his buttocks, if you will. He would have whipped it way inside um, and then would have then rerouted it over the top. So let's go ahead and take this to the top now. And you can see that right there, you can see he's really matched his address shaft plane line beautifully. And obviously that's not where he was when he originally started to say the least. He was over there by the roof of that clubhouse. And 
as you see him bring it down, he shallows out the club really nicely. He gets it back on the golf ball, matches his, you know, just shaft plane. Like, let's take it to the top and back down again, if you don't mind, Vinny. Back down. So really kind of works up and down that plane line beautifully now. Um, and he's probably, uh, is about a club and a half longer than when it was irons and when we started. He was so much over the top and across the golf ball. And uh, his trajectory has kind of become a little flatter, a little more, a little more driven now. Um, and I love the voiceover though. Can we hear some of the voiceover? Yeah, go ahead. Can y'all hear it? No. I'm not hearing anything here, just so you know. Tom says that um, you, you, this guy should take this video and put it on a video replay because it's the best swing he's ever seen in his life. And he might not ever swing that good ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy and I have, have developed a hell of a relationship. He's a, uh, he's a business consultant who's uh, actually consults the US Air Force and various other government agencies, a really smart man. Um, and, At the and end, you say that he should put this on a, he should blast this on a large screen TV in his golf room and watch it over and over and over again. You know, I, I, I threatened to take this piece of film and tie him into a chair in his basement and make him watch it for 24 hours straight without going to sleep. Um, it is a really, it is a really good voiceover though. If I wish we, we'll, we'll attach it to our recording um, when we send out the video because the voiceover that Tom gives of the student is absolutely hilarious. But you can see the drawing tools that he's used. Um, and that's a really great example of one of Tom's lessons. Hey Tom, should we give away Oh, Don was on the, he says, careful, I'm on the Zoom. Don is watching. <laughs> so let me say something to Don while he's watching. Don Linsman, that video is a byproduct of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on your and my part. And, and you've worked your ass off getting yourself to that point. And it's a credit to you for all the hard work you've done. Don is also not only a live lesson taker of mine in Florida, but he's a live lesson taker of mine up north when I go north during the summer. And he is a uh, a V1 package subscriber of mine. And, and in between lessons, I see him bi-weekly, but in between lessons, I always get from one to three videos of him checking in in between lessons. Coach, am I doing this correctly? Are we on the right page? So he is a really, really big uh, proponent of V1. He is, he is definitely- Thank you for it. saying that. I love that yeah. you are sharing that folks are reaching out all the time. I mean, all the time. When you're out there and you want to be connected to your coach, you don't have to have a lesson schedule. Just take the video, send it through. And, I mean, and, and, Don, and Don uses the tool as well as anybody else I've ever seen. He really does stay connected via the tool. That's awesome. That is awesome. Kelly, can you um, pick us a winner for our drawing? So the way our drawing works is everyone is automatically entered if you registered. Um, and she will put them through a drawing, a random drawing. And it looks like... Bud Nevers has won our $1,200 package. Bud, congratulations. I'm sure you're going to love it. You'll get a lot of really awesome videos from Tom. Actually, Bud has asked a really great question about the pressure mat that I'll answer here in a second. Um, Bud's question is, does the pressure mat have an audio feature that gives you feedback during an actual swing? No, it does not have an audio feature. Um, in our studio setup, we have a hit detector. So when the... Um, the hit detector, here's the club swinging, it starts filming, and the body track pressure data is captured in real time with the swing. So you take that video button, you go back, and you can look at the swing in slow-mo. As we were looking at that video that Tom just had, you can go back and forth and look at the swing in slow-mo, you can draw lines, and then also you can look at the pressure in correlation with the swing um, and slow it down and really analyze where your feet are heels, toes, right, left, based on where you are, where you are in the golf swing. So no audio, um, but it is triggered by a hit detector. I, I, so I you don't have to push suggest, buttons, in other words. Mindy, and I was going to suggest to Brian that when, if they ever do put audio in the pressure mat, it should be your voice. <laughs> People would never use it. They would never use it. I, I've rewatched these and my voice is so annoying. Oh my God. It's terrible. Um, thank you. Tom Patry is the greatest. I agree for that. Uh, Christian says that. And congratulations, bud. Okay, hello, Tom. Would you bring the putter back? When you bring the putter back, would you use the left shoulder or the right shoulder to bring it back for right-handed golf? So 
I, I've never held the putter before with my left shoulder, my right shoulder. I've always held it with my hands. Um, ha ha. So I don't bring it back with my shoulders. I bring it back with my hands and arms. So I'm not a big teeter totter or, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it putter. I, I believe that the arms swing and the body responds to an arm swing. Um, when you throw a baseball, you don't throw with your right shoulder, you throw with your right or left hand. And I think that our hands are pretty educated. I mean, we eat with them, we shave with them, we, uh, we wash and bathe with them, we drive a car, we dial, dial a phone with them. Our hands are, are really well educated, so why wouldn't we use our hands to swing the putter? Okay. All right, I'm taking all this putting knowledge with me over the break. Um, okay, we, I cannot let you go without hearing a little bit about your time overseas with Verity. Oh my God. I, I'm not sure if we, this might all be a race. So if you don't get this live, you might not get it. Now, I don't know David that well, but I'll give you my, my only David story. Um, so this is 19, oh boy, 1984. We're playing in the, um, I might get this wrong. I think I'm right about this. The South African PGA in Johannesburg, South Africa. And we have a rain delay. And we're sitting in the player's lounge waiting for this rain delay to end. It's pouring outside. And this guy named David Ferry sits down next to me, to my right. And I don't, I don't really know him. And, and you got to understand that he, I don't know him personally, but I know who he is, obviously. He's already been successful in Europe. Um, not uh, much more successful than I am at this point in my life. And he, he I look over and he starts writing. Um, he has a book full of uh, what we would call American Express traveler's checks. And he starts writing them and signing them and ripping them out of the book, writing and signing and ripping them out of the book. And they're in sterling, which is British pounds at the time. And I look over and each, and each note is like a, a, the equivalent of like a $250 American dollar note. And he's writing them and ripping them off, writing them and ripping them off. <laughs> This book is like this thick and he's, and he's signing him. And as soon as you sign him, they're basically cash, you know? Right. Yeah. And I said, I said to him, I said, what, well, well, dude, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> he says, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to buy a diamond ring. I said, you're going to buy a what? He goes, I'm going to buy a diamond ring. I said, and for who? He goes, well, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get married. I said, you're going to get married. I said, really? Congratulations. I said, you know, how long have you guys been together? He goes, well, I met her last night. I said, you did what? <laughs> He said, yeah, I met her last night. I said, I think you might want to think this over, pal. Why don't you slow down here a little bit? Let's talk about this. He goes, he goes no, no, I'm doing this. So fast forward 100 years, and I've stopped playing. I'm teaching, and I'm in Westchester County, New York. I'm teaching at Westchester Country Club, and I'm playing in a, uh, a pro member tournament at a place called Hudson National. And David Faraday, this is 25 years later, 20 years later, is the guest speaker at the dinner. <laughs> and at the cocktail party, I walk up to him. I said, you might not remember me, but we've met before. He goes, he goes, yeah, you look so familiar to me. Where have we met? I said, well, I, you and I are sat next to each other in a rain delay in Johannesburg, South Africa. <laughs> and you were, you were ripping off these American Express traveler's checks like they were paper. He goes, that was you? And <laughs> by, the way, by the way, since divorce from this woman, that was very expensive and very, very, not very pleasant. But he did marry her? And he grabs me like this. He goes, you could have saved me so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh I, just, I said, I tried, buddy. I tried. I tried. That I is tried crazy. To... I can't believe he met, he married a girl after he met her one time in South Africa. That's crazy. That's, that's my understanding. That's now, that I, if, I, if, I, if I have that wrong, somebody out there can correct me, but that's my understanding of the occurrences from a hundred years ago. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. All right. Um, so I have a really great question from a, a client of mine who I love. His name is David Coates. He's the head pro um, and very long time user of V1. He has a student who's watching tonight okay. who has a huge problem with rotating his body through the impact zone. He basically stops, especially with his wedges. Any good drills? So I guess my first question would be, and it's hard to do this in this medium, David, is, you know, how old is the person? What's their skill level? But, um, you know, it's, it's something we see all the time when people stall through the impact area with their pelvic region. You know, I, I spent a lot of time, <laughs> this is going to sound kind of crazy, on my knees behind a person, putting, <laughs> hands on their rump, crazy. putting my hands on their rump, and as they're hitting shots, actually making them feel their pelvic girdle rotate. Um, I also use a balance board, um, you know, a teeter-totter balance board, where I make them hit shots off of a balance board to feel them transfer their weight from right to left as they're rotating. 
but I actually manually stand behind them on my knees. And while they're hitting shots, I'll rotate them. And the, 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 obviously when I do that, most times I hear the first response is, I've never felt that before. Well, of course you haven't because you've never done it before. Um, so I actually make them manually move their body. Um, I'll also, if you can picture this, I'll take an alignment stick and I'll put it through their belt loops in the front of their belt, uh, through one loop and through another. So it, the, the, belt, the, the alignment stick is along their belt line and I'll let them see what it looks like as they make swings. A lot of times they'll make a swing and just move their arms and the stick won't move at all. So I'll make them turn the stick and move the stick from side to side so they can visually see it. I'll also film that using V1. Imagine that V1 to let them see that happen too. Because again, a picture is worth a thousand words. So some manual movement, some visual enforcement, and maybe some kinesthetic movement off of a balance board. Nice. Um, we did a seminar before COVID and we put the balance a pressure mat on top of a balance board. Super cool. If you're ever messing around, you should, I don't know if you've done that, but it was really fascinating Mandy, because that balance Mandy, board is- Mandy, Mandy this is- this is my 40th year teaching. I've given just a little bit over 60,000 lesson hours. Do you think I, I know, but I mean, you think I haven't done that before? I, well, you use a lot of training aids and I've seen a lot of crazy stuff, but I, you I'm know, I'm you I'm probably old. have, I'm but old. the 84 people still watching may have not even <laughs> thought that you can put a pressure mat on top of a balance board. Crazy. I have a guy using one for a crush equestrian archery under a horse saddle. Is that crazy? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um, all right, so Randy Floor, Floor, sorry, I'm missing that pronunciation, says, do you have any homemade training aids? If so, what are some of your favorites? Did you homemade yeah, your balance board? Yeah, I did. I actually made the balance, balance board. It's no big deal. I, I had a very crude version while I was at Westchester 100 years ago. And then when I came to Naples, I, uh, I befriended a guy who's an incredible high-end home builder, carpenter. Guy's a real, he's an artist. And uh, he looked at my <laughs> homemade version and he, and he was making fun of me. So I'm going to make one for you. And he made one that is, it's like a piece of art. Oh, and, that's cool. we, and we've wound up making uh, probably 500 of the last two winners and selling them. Um, oh, that's cool. They're, they're beautiful. Uh, they're, 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 they're really, really much more sturdy than the one I was using and much more user-friendly. Um, he does a beautiful job with them. So we do, we do sell those. Yeah. So if I had a balance board, what would be the, um, what, what's my drill? Well, usually, usually it's for two things. People don't use their feet very well. So train footwork and, and movement, rotational movement as far as well as weight distribution and pressure distribution from side to side. Imagine that. Uh, so it's a manual version of the body of a body track. Right. Uh, yeah. So um, the, body, the body track is, is visual and, and, you know, visual feedback on a screen. The balance board is kinesthetic feedback. You can really feel what's going on. Right. Right. Makes sense. Jay Bound says, do your senior students have more difficulty with short pitch shots than your younger students? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I don't, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's an age thing. I think sometimes it's a confidence factor and sometimes it's just a skill. Um, no, I don't, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's based on age. Not at all. Um, you do a really good job. I want to talk a little bit about your social media and your marketing because as we love to support golf pros, Haley is our social media, mar social media marketing director. And, and Haley does and an incredible job, by the she way. She does. So can you talk to that? I mean, you've grown your business a lot through lots of different channels, but you nail your social media. Can you? So can I'll, you tell you, I'll tell you how that, I'll tell you a quick story of how that happened. So back in 95, 96, 97, about the same time as I got involved with V1, I was teaching a student who owns a really, really sophisticated um, high-tech media company in New York. And he came to me and said, you know, you need a website. And I'm a picture, this is 1995. And I said, what's a website? <laughs> yeah, that's how smart I was. He said, well, you have to, and he explains it to me. He said, you have to, I said, Gal I'm golfer. Why do I need a website? He says, you need a website. So he built me a website as a gift. Um, and it was a very 95, very crude version of what we have today. And I kept it that way. Didn't ever touched it. You know, it wasn't a big deal. It was kind of a two page thing. You know, I, I didn't really get it. And about uh, not long ago, 10 years ago, maybe here in Naples, I was teaching a man who's become a dear friend who was the outgoing marketing director for a company called Campbell Soup. Have you ever heard of Campbell mm. Soup? Little, uh, yeah. Yeah, a little, sure company in Cam little company in Camden, New Jersey. So he says to me, your website is the worst website in America. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. Thank you very much. He goes, I'm going to bring you to a person in Philadelphia, a woman who I outsource a lot of our stuff at Campbell's to. And she's going to make you a social media guru. I go, you're, you're, well, I guess, first of all, I'm a technical idiot. 
And second of all, I can't afford somebody who does work for Campbell Soup. He goes, you can afford her. I said, I don't think so. He goes, you're gonna come meet her? I said, fine. So that May, I met a woman um, named Candy Roberts who has a, uh, a company called Quantum Think Labs in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And she sat me down and told me what an idiot I was and how bad my website was. And she said to me, we're gonna blow your website up. We're gonna start a newsletter. We're gonna, we're gonna get you on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, Facebook. And I'm saying, what are you talking about? What are those things? I don't even know what those things are. He goes, I'm gonna have you train within a year and then you're gonna take it over yourself. And I'm gonna do a few things to support you, but you can afford me. And when she gave me the number for what she was gonna do, I thought she was, I thought she was kidding me. Uh, she made it very affordable for me. And within a year's time, she really kind of trained me to navigate all these platforms and I've kind of run with it. I've kind of enjoyed it. It's something I enjoy doing now. Uh, you know, my, uh, my reach now per post is about 45,000 golfers every time I blow something up. Um, the, awesome. newsletter, the, the newsletter has about 13 to 14,000 uh, subscribers. Um, what's, your, what's your preferred social channel for golfers? Right, I'm just kidding. Right, right now, the one I'm enjoying the most is Instagram. I'm really yeah. enjoying it. I, 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 like, I like its capabilities. It's always... Uh, it's always fun. It feels like it gets out there quicker and, and you can do more things with it. Um, but I'm, I'm still, you know, my, my older folks, <laughs> my older folks are still Facebookers. My younger folks, my mid younger folks are Instagrammers. Uh, and then obviously I haven't gone to TikTok or any of those things yet, but uh, that, you know, that's where the kids are. Uh, so it depends who you're trying to reach. I think, you know, in my demographic in Southwest Florida, you know, I'm, I'm in the, my most popular and most successful medium is kind of from 40 to 60. So Instagram and Facebook works in this medium. Uh, yep. if, I was trying to, if I was trying to run a junior camp, that probably wouldn't fly. It'd probably have to be TikTok or something else. Um, and, and Candy advises me on those things still. Are you going to uh, do a TikTok, Tom? I, 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 I'm not, I'm, I don't think white people should dance, Mandy. Well, um, uh, listen, I, my kids tell me about I this TikTok. I, I don't think white men should dance especially, so that leaves me out. You know? Okay, well, I listen, I am just past the age of understanding TikTok, but if I hear that you've done a TikTok, I'm tuning into that. Yeah, that, um, that would be, be frightening. <laughs> I'm a pretty good dancer. I actually danced ballet for most of my life. Come on. You're not getting me, you're not getting me to do that. <laughs> uh, Richard Rowe is based in Naples. Where can people come see you in Naples? Richard Rose, you can come see me at Crown Colony in Fort Myers. Although I'm in the worldwide headquarters of TP Golf here in Naples, uh, I teach about uh, 35 minutes north of here at Crown Colony. I'm the director of instruction there. It is a wonderful facility and a really, really good golf course, by the way, really good, um, which I'm getting to play tomorrow, which I'm very happy with. My GM, myself, my superintendent, and our club champion are playing golf tomorrow afternoon. I am very excited to have a day on the golf course tomorrow. Um, wow, how often do you get to actually play? Um, so I, I, I was named director of instruction there, um, Mandy, um, as you know, October 15th and tomorrow will be my first full round of golf there since I've been there. I played awesome. some, played nine a couple of times and I try to play a few holes in the evening before I go home, but you know, I, not, not much time to play a full round. So tomorrow will be a full round of golf and the boys have told me that they're going to slaughter me tomorrow. And I, I, I beg to differ with that. So we'll see. Well, that is, it, it will certainly be an awesome celebration the week of Christmas to get to play all 18 fun. holes at your new course, which is awesome. I've seen the promotions. Congratulations yeah, it's, on that. It's a nice, thank you. It's a nice place. And Tom, you know, thank you so much for, for letting me just pick your brain tonight. It's been a totally different webinar than we normally do, but I really appreciate it. And I've been waiting for you specifically to share this hour. And I really am so grateful. I think it was really cool that everyone got to hear how far we've come together. Oh my God. So, so Mandy, let me, let me turn that around a little bit. So for the folks out there watching, um, the Mandys and the Kellys and, and the people behind the scenes of even the Bryans, um, we, we as golf professionals need technical support. We need technical support to make the experience for our learners better every day. So whether it's Body Tracker V1 um, or any other medium that we use, um, we should be saying thank you to you guys because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to help people the way we do on a daily basis. Uh, every PGA professional that I've come in contact with that has used V1 has only sung the praises of the people behind the scenes of V1. And without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do the job we do. So the thank yous should be going the other way, not this way. But we, thank I, you so thank you so much, Tom. That that's that really means lots. I mean, seriously, we like. We call it a family. When I, when I sign someone up, I say, welcome to the family. And we very much mean that. 
No, we it, want it you to good. um feel the love and i certainly feel it from you and i thank you so much for your time tonight great being on with you guys you guys have a merry christmas a happy new year and i'm going to sign off the way i always do short game short game short game yes sir peace. merry christmas peace peace good night you guys